Hello everyone. Ah, there we go. Works. Thank you for coming today. Um, welcome to spring term. Well, actually, not, well, almost welcome to summer term. Um, but thank you for coming along. This is the spring rep assembly or spring term rep assembly. Um, I know some of you came last time, so thank you for coming to both. Um, so I'm just I'm basically going to just give you a bit of an update about uh, everything here at RUSU and everything here at the university, um, and and a bit a few of the opportunities that you can get involved in as a as a course rep as well. Um, even on the on the back end of the year, uh, and yes, thank you for for taking your time out in regards to assessments, um, and and hopefully your your exam timetables look okay. But yeah, um, so yes, uh, here we are. Here's what we're going to cover. Um, so first, I'm going to talk to you about the opportunities. Uh, then we're going to talk about some updates from higher education more generally. Uh, updates from the University of Reading. Um, Celebrate your hard work, so some other things that we, we have here at RUSU. Uh, then we have Roger, uh, who's going to come up and he's going to talk to us and, and run a Mentimeter on library systems and how he can feed into library systems. Um, and then we're going to have Jeff uh, Anderson from Careers, who was here last time, um, and he's talking about uh, how you can apply your experience as a course rep in your CV uh, and beyond, basically. So, here's some opportunities. Um, oh, the few of the formatting's gone a bit, but so we have Student Experience Awards, uh, they'll become upcoming, uh, I think we're going to, during the, the Easter break, uh, launch the surveys out regarding that. These are for students that you want to nominate um, for uh, awards that, uh, whether they're, you know, basically the best course rep of the year, or, or most engaged, or um, most engaged with regard to societies and other things like that. So I'd really encourage you to, to first of all, nominate other students, um, but also tell your course reps and, and tell, your, uh, tell other students about, about the awards, because it's a really good opportunity to, to just highlight excellence amongst students who, who are engaged and, and, and you know, who, who care about their courses, who care about their societies and the university community more widely. Uh, we have ex excellence awards. These are um, awards for staff, uh, but also I think there might be a, a, a best course rep of the year and a best senior rep of the year on that form as well. Uh, so these close today at 5 p.m. Um, you'll have opportunity to, to of course, uh, feedback into the student experience awards. But if there is a member of staff that you really think has had a, a, a a really beneficial impact um, on, on your course mates or on you, uh, or student voice more generally, um, or somebody who you think just does a really good job, uh, that's the space to say it. Um, they have a, a member of staff from each school gets uh, uh, an award um, in, in combination with a few other awards focused around sustainability, um, postgraduate teaching, and uh, other more wide awards as such. So, there's those two. Then we have a University Mental Health Charter focus group. This will be in June slash July. I think, it, I think it might be the 4th of June, if I remember correctly. Um, this is something that our welfare officer um, and the university more generally has been working towards. It's a framework, basically uh, an award scheme um, for universities to, to submit to um, that talks about mental health uh, and, and mental health provision within universities. They get ranked, I think it's sort of gold, silver, bronze, um, and uh, it's, it's basically the opportunity to showcase the level of support universities can give with regard to mental health and, and wider support services. Um, here we, we're looking for, we'll have assessors from uh, the mental health charter actually come to the University of Reading, and they're going to want to hear from students who have had uh, experience or students who know of other students' experience of mental health um, here uh, at Reading. So this, this is kind of potentially your place to, to come in and, and, and say, uh, you know, what students have been saying, uh, and, and these are paid roles that will include about four to five hours of work there in June. Um, so this is, this is a good opportunity, um, and if you just have a talk to me about it, I'll get your name. There's also a QR code later on, so you can, if any of these opportunities are interest to you, you can just let me know. Um, leadership by-election. Uh, so they're currently working out whether we're going to do this in summer term or autumn term, um, but there were various, of course, senior rep roles that have just been nominated for, but there are also some senior reps who, um, who didn't get nominated for in various schools. I'm just going to read them out. Um, 
they are. Uh, those are SAGES, there are two senior rep roles available. There's one for built environment, one for Institute of Education, and two for Henley Business School. Um, and there's also a by-election that we're going to run on our, our trans officer um, as well, our part-time position. So these will likely come out either in the summer um, or very early in autumn term. So if you are a course rep now and from any of those schools um, or, or any of those representative groups, um, put yourself forward. Uh, and, uh, and it, it could be a, it, it's effectively a step up um, if you're a course rep, but if, it's, uh, if you know somebody who you think would be really, really good at the opportunity, then, then tell them to nominate themselves as well. Uh, we have senior rep training for those who have been either re-elected or those who are newly elected as senior reps. Uh, that will be happening later on in the summer. Uh, I would say it's always good to turn up if you've been re-elected uh, to, to, to training, but equally, we know that if you've already trained as that role, or if you're going to be a course rep next year, and you've already trained as a course rep, just let us know. Um, you don't necessarily need to. So that's all there. Uh, we have Reading University Student Sustainability Summit. That happened in on the 1st of March. Um, and thank you to those of you who presented. Um, but it's basically now we're up to making a publication, uh, and we're going to do this, uh, we're basically going to bring together all of the presentations on the day, but also any students who didn't get the opportunity to present. So if you're interested in presenting on, um, or sorry, writing on the UN Sustainable Development Goals, if you have an interest in anything that you can relate to sustainability, um, come forward, let me know. Uh, I'm really happy to include you in that publication. Um, we're also looking at, we, we've just twinned with a university in Ukraine. Um, in Kiev, um, or Kiev, um, and they are very interested at doing sort of a half and half. So have this publication from the ecological impacts of the war in Ukraine, um, and and have have the publication both in Ukrainian um, and in English. So it would be a really really good opportunity if you wanted to come forward and do it, um, and you'd be doing it as a as a bit of an international publication. Um, and yes, we have a library focus group. So. I'll go get onto this a little bit further later on, um, but this is regarding uh, lap safe lockers. So there are lap safe um, laptops, basically. Uh, they are the laptops for hire um, that are currently in the library, and we're looking at getting some really engaged students, probably in the next month or so, to to trial run them. Um, so they're, they're currently available to all students anyway. They haven't fully been set up, um, but once they're set up, they basically want course reps or a small group of us to go over there and just try them out. Um, if that's something that interests you, feel free to sign up. I'll let you know closer to the time. Um, if it's during the middle of exam season, uh, I don't blame you. Focus on your exams. Um, but yes, so that's all there. Um, outside of that, um, yes. Uh, Higher education updates. So, so these are updates around the sector more generally. Um, I won't update on absolutely everything because there's so much that happens within higher education. It's such an interesting space as well. Um, also because in autumn term, I think I covered quite a few things. Um, so at the moment, I think probably the two key things um, uh, that are happening with regard to uh, all things that at least f affect teaching and learning spaces uh, are the freedom of speech bill and the work that the, the regulator is currently doing on freedom of speech. Um, this is going to implement policies that effectively um, allow uh, the OFS to, to have an, uh, uh, an appeal route or, or to, to have oversight of freedom of speech in university spaces, but also student union spaces. So um, this is this is a fairly controversial bill, but also one that has been the focus of the government for quite a while, um, and it's basically to ensure that freedom of speech um, across the across the university sector is, is upheld. Um, so we can come, you know, come speak to me about that. It's a very big issue, um, uh, and I'd I'd like to hear your opinions on that generally as well. Uh, we have harassment and sexual misconduct. This is a condition that again the regulator is bringing in. Um, Basically, uh, the, the regulator said, uh, or the OFS, the Office of Students, um, found that uh, 
the, this, the sector as a whole had failed to respond to um, adequately supporting students with regard to, to harassment and sexual misconduct and, and the roots of appeal and the roots of, the roots of really dealing with those situations. Um, so this is a, it's a big condition that will be coming into place to basically ensure that staff are better trained with regard to um, dealing with these situations, uh, but also to, to better inform students. Uh, and crucially, it, it says that if you can't put adequate support in place, you can't be a university. So, um, <laughs> a pretty, pretty strict stance, which is really good to hear. Um, and again, this, there's currently a consultation that's going out. So if you are somebody um, who, who has particular opinions on this, um, you can feed into the consultation via the OFS website. Uh, there is also a webinar on their YouTube, and there is um, a prevalence survey going out that universities will conduct as well. Great inflation and awarding gaps. So back in 2021, uh, the university sector um, basically committed to cutting grade inflation. Grade inflation, since he sir, the people who collect all the data with regard to universities, uh, has been going on probably for a good part of 40 years. Um, I think the statistic off the top of my head was in 1994, uh, there was 41.3% of students were getting firsts and two ones. Uh, today that sits at 83%. Um, so, you know, the regulator and the sector generally um, says that this is a really bad thing because it's unexplained. Um, lots of universities say, actually, we've had improvements in pedagogy, we've had improvements in um, uh, technology and in, in, in supporting underrepresented groups, and there's more money in the sector now than there was, uh, and therefore people should be achieving more. So this is something that I've been speaking about um, at, at, at various conferences, and how we sort of engage students within the grade inflation and standards um, debate because I think at the moment it's something that we very m the sector very much controls uh, and, and, and it's uh, talked about very much at university level but not really necessarily at student level and the worries that come along with that. Quality updates, um, there are more general quality updates, uh, the IFS has taken over designated quality board work, basically it means that they're going to start um, sending people along to universities who are underperforming um, and working out why they're underperforming and then telling them what to do. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's that in a nutshell. Um, we've got the revised National Student Survey, um, so there are new questions on this other things. National Student Survey is basically something that you, you complete in your third year, so if there are any third years here, um, please make sure you've done it. Apparently people have been harassed on it <laughs> specifically, um, but, but Make sure you've done your National Student Survey. Um, it's your best possible chance to influence the university with regard to anything. Uh, they care a lot about NSS results. I've had in so many meetings which shows the NSS results from this school or that school say this or that, and they will respond to that because it's credible evidence. Uh, it also influences the TEF. So that big thing back in September and, and right through to January that I've been working on, uh, all of that was based off of NSS data. Um, really important. So if you know third years and they haven't done it, um, kick them. Access participation plans, uh, basically this is just the sector's uh, approach to um, APP plans are things that universities uh, create uh, every, I believe it's every four to five years, um, and they're just revisiting how they do it. At the moment, GEM, our uh, Inclusion Communities um, Officer, is on this, uh, but they have a few different revised uh, conditions with regard to equality of opportunity and creating a risk register both for the sector more widely in the university. So, to make sure I don't ever run, we're going to quickly through the University of Reading updates. So, as I said, laptop blockers, they're coming, but they're still delayed. Portfolio review, ongoing and ever confusing. Uh, so, if you haven't heard of portfolio review, um, there should be a communication that has gone out this week, if not, it's going out this week, where I, I talk through it for it with Elizabeth, um, they make me look like a vampire, all my blood's being drained out of me on the, <laughs> it shone way too much light on me. Um, exam timetables, of course they're here, please come speak to me about this if you're, if you're particularly upset. I probably can't change anything, I won't lie, um, I don't think anyone could change anything. I think I was saying in our consultation earlier, uh, in the senior rep consultation, that uh, it doesn't matter whether the government legislated for them to change the exam timetable, the university probably wouldn't. Uh, but if you're particularly upset, tell me about it and we can try and formulate something. Um, 
ongoing, still making progress on voice notes, um, making voting easier generally from Rusu and, and study space maps for the university. Um, we, yes, study space progress, so there are uh, five or six schools, I believe, five that have received money with regard to specific spaces. So, so law school for Foxhill House is going to change one of their um, rooms into a laptop room. Um, London Road is having a open space within its staff room uh, for to basically better better the experience of students. Um, we've got rooms um, and updates to places in agriculture and meteorology of an agriculture building, and we have up in Edith Morley the Sackle building, or the, I think it's the self-access center of language and learning. I, maybe that's not correct, but they're gonna get pods and get a whole updated space up there. So that's all really good. Um, that was 200,000 pounds of money that the university put aside to, to basically approve new spaces and these were school bids that we've approved. We've got self-certification developments, question mark. Now, um, this is ongoing, maybe you want to influence your individual schools about this or, or, or talk about these experiences, but um, as you know, we have self-certification exceptional circumstances um, requests at the moment. We have two, and they are two days a year. COVID is a thing. Um, trying to get uh, evidence for COVID is particularly difficult, uh, and it can be faked quite easily. The university doesn't really like that. So uh, we've been trying to work out ways of ensuring that students who still have COVID or, or, or get these things are able to put this through and, and get a credible, exceptional circumstance to their assessments. Um, what we have, or what we've, we've basically uh, come up with, is first we have a relaxation of evidence to the end of the year. Um, and second, we've managed to front um, a increase to the self-certification days, um, still being approved, asterisk on that, uh, for, so you'll, you'll get two self-certification periods and they will be at five working days each, which is an increase by a bit because two working days never really felt like enough. Um, yes, uh, feedback journey flyers, we've made these wonderful flyers, which I can hand out later. Um, basically to, to, to work students through the, the assessment, proof, uh, sorry, assessment feedback process. Um, so there are tons and tons of those if you want to come collect them and distribute them to your students. Um, I've worked along that side CQS team doing that. Uh, cost of living, we still have hardship funding, so, uh, and the IFS has released more money with that, so jump on that. Um, module selection changes to portfolio review, that's a really long, complex one. Um, I'm gonna for time not go over that but basically um there's there we're making changes to the module selection um uh space for part zeros and part one um it should fall closer to the autumn term in the middle of autumn term in your first semester if you're part zero part one um the idea is that you get a bit of a feel for university first before you make your module selection for semester two um yes so so those are those Rusu updates uh quickly go through these. Uh, Jem has a risk quality review workshop that she's going to have uh, reorganized at the moment, a cultural show that's coming as well. So uh, keep your eyes out on the, the recent website for those. Don't know if I mentioned an autumn term, probably. We had a US referendum. We stopped paying the money, full stop. Um, TEF submission, done plus thank you. Yes, submitted in January. We published in September. So if you want to read about um, I guess what we wrote as RUSU uh, as a student submission, you can do that in September. And if you have any criticism, I won't be here. There we go. <laughs> um, so you can you can put that elsewhere. Um, but but no, you can you I, you you know my name. You can find my social media. Um, but but yes. So thank you for that. We've we've drawn any of the 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 surveys uh, for that. So they're all done. Um, We've got a community festival upcoming, uh, and yes, we have new FTOs, uh, one of which is Sophie Jordan. She will be your next education officer, uh, so congratulations, Sophie. Um, and they're all listed there as well. And we have the Sustainability Summit, which is on screen as well. And we've got a few more as well. Uh, we have a rebrand. Some of you have opinions about this. We all do. Um, let me know. Uh, <laughs> Welfare plus Relax Rusu. Um, this is happening, or Wellfest, sorry. Uh, this is happening on Friday. Come along, 11, 11 to 2 p.m. Um, Poppy is at the back. She can talk more about it, um, but, but that's happening. That will be a, a, a pilot to the next Relax at Rusu. Uh, if you were here last year, there were zoo animals and things, so hopefully we'll get some more of those in or something. Um, I'm going to review rep training 
review the ways that we process data at RUSU so that we're better uh, next time for with regard to, 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 to TEF and, and dealing with the sector and, and the metrics generally. Um, and also a student partnership review uh, because I feel like the current rep system, although it's okay, uh, isn't being taken seriously enough by the university. Um, and yes, I hear horrors from uh, specific modules uh, uh, and, and I think also portfolio review where that's been such a big piece of work for the university. It's meant that rep work has slid on the agenda, which, um, so yeah, we're going to pull that together. We also have the community festival there. I said twice. Huh. So, what we want to hear from you mostly, um, successes, tell us what you've achieved this year. If you've achieved, tell us your surveys, tell us any problems and worries you have, um, and tell us uh, whether, your, uh, whether your departments and schools have engaged you on program approvals and portfolio review. If they haven't, I want to know. I'm going to chase them up and tell them off. So that's on the QR code there. If you, if you, if you do that quickly, if not, just come find me. I'll give it a minute for that. So, is it not working? In which case, tell me, tell me individually. <laughs> is it not working for everyone? Damn it. Oh well, you can tell me. Anyway, celebrating your hard work. Um, basically, yes. If not, email me. Um, there we go. Uh, so, overall, as a course rep, as a senior rep, what do you need to know? Um, Focus on your exams and assessments. It's been a difficult term for everyone, I think. Um, hopefully they go well. Uh, do email me um, how things are going. Speak to myself or Hannah with regards to the reward and recognition scheme. There's a lot of unclaimed bits on there. Uh, and you can tell us whether, whether you've achieved silver, gold, platinum, etc., and just demonstrate where, where you have. Um, we have lots of cafe vouchers to give out so you can do that today she will be around today um, and, and and yeah just come find me on that as well so that's all there and and yeah I, I guess really enjoy um, I think Beth I think you've got five minutes with your padlet hopefully that QR code works we have one one extra thing um, she's running so yeah that's that's all there um, and we weren't cat themed this time around. Um, I apologize, I took suggestions for animals, but then I couldn't find enough pictures of animals online, so. Perfect, right. Hello, sorry, I didn't realize I'd be next. Um, so, hi everyone, I am Beth, I'm part of the student voice team with Hannah, but I am also one of Rusu's staff leads on our listening campaign. Um, so this is a new project um, as part of our membership with a company called Citizens UK. We have pledged to listen to 300 people, whether that's staff, students, reps, um, before the end of summer term. Whew, I'm out of breath from running. That shows how unfit I am. Um, so for a bit of context, as a student's union, and as a student's voice team, we always want to be listening to you, obviously, um, and hearing your concerns and where we can improve experiences. But in this specific context, um, we are listening for stories and issues specific to Reading as a town and as a place, um, rather than as a university. So Citizens UK is a national organization that helps towns and cities all across the UK to um, empower their area, to develop leaders, strengthen organizations, and create change through using community organizing methods. RUSU and the university have both signed up separately, so we're separate members of Citizens Reading, um, and we're also leading the formation of the alliance in the town. Um, this hopefully means that, or this will mean, that we get to have a leading say in what change we try to make locally, um, and we want all of you to have your opinions shared as well. So the aim is to get a diverse group of organizations, whether that's the university, faith groups, schools, small organizations, and a diverse group of voices across Reading, um, voices that represent Reading, um, involved to advocate for change and also hold decision makers to account. So hopefully once we've done all our listening, a large part of what we do will be talk to um, the next, 
um, councillors running in the election, talk to um, Reading Borough Council, the police force, um, decision makers and power holders like that, um, and hold them to account, essentially. Um, as one person or one organisation, it can feel like you don't have very much power against those big um, big names and big decision makers. So hopefully linking us all up all together and building relational power means we're stronger and able to create more change. So as part of this, each organization has pledged to listen to a set number of people um, from within and around their organization. And so we want to hear from all of you. Um, we're officially launching this in summer term, but I thought I'd get a bit of a head start and you get to be the first people to have your say. Um, each organization through our listening will identify key themes from the listening we've done and then at the end of June we'll all come back together and decide who we're going to lobby and what we're, they're going to lobby them for. It's quite broad, um, obviously Reading has lots of positives, lots of things we can change um, and so many different areas that we can choose to focus on. Um, so that means we're happy to hear any thoughts and responses you might have. Um, and lastly, as we're all about developing leaders, it's a good chance um, for you to get involved more as well um, and either help with the listenings or share your stories um, and be the person stood on the stage or um, sat at the table with that power holder um, making those decisions. So hopefully, this QR code, if the screen's not wobbling too much, will work. Um, if not, the code um, or the web link is underneath. Um, and so we've got two broad questions. Um, they're on the Padlet and also on the screen. Um, if you had the power to change just one thing about Reading, what would it be? Um, or what would you or what would increase your sense of belonging in Reading? Um, you can choose to answer both or either. Um, and so hopefully the Padlet is working. Um, and at the bottom, there will be um, a plus, and you can add a comment. Um, it should also be set up so you can like other people's if someone else says something and you think, yes, that is an issue, or I totally agree with that, you can like it, add a comment underneath, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and if you're happy to share your stories or have your name put against um, your comment, um, just you can add your first name and either the course you do or something like that. Um, or come and speak to me at the end and I can get you more involved. Um, but as I said, the campaign is going on throughout summer term, um, so there's plenty of chance for you to add more comments as they come up or to be involved as well. Um, a lot of the listening we'll do will be based on one-to-one -one conversations. Um, so if you want to be involved, it's a great way to um, develop some skills and also make great networks within Reading if you're planning on staying here after graduation. Um, then you can let myself or one of the team know um, and hopefully, as well as us asking you to fill in this, that we can give you the opportunity um, to also get lots from it as well. My email is also at the bottom if you have any other thoughts or want to get in contact. I will go now. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to give you one more minute to do that and then we can move on. Perfect. I think people are mostly done. Well, either way, thank you very much for listening to, to the, to the rep update. Now, um, yeah, get in touch with myself or, or Hannah, those emails right there. Um, if not, you can just find us online, Rusu website. Um, 
now we're going to go, I'm going to invite Roger up to the stage. He's going to talk, or at least give us some feedback regarding the library and interesting updates with the library system. Um, there's a Mentimeter involved, which I think everyone generally likes. Um, at least I really liked it. So. Hello, thanks very much for having me. This is an awful lot more exciting than my normal job, which involves sitting on an awful lot of Teams meetings. I should probably introduce myself first. My name is Rodri Buttrick. I'm a business analyst from DTS, or as you probably would call it, it's the IT department at the uni, because that's what it is. We just love strange acronyms. Rodri is actually a Welsh name for really good business analyst. And, uh, well, butt trick is, well, quite frankly, an abomination. I mean, how I survive school is, is anyone's guess. Uh, what am I doing? That is a question I ask myself every morning when I get up. But uh, today, I am working on IT projects within the university, and one specifically relevant to you guys. I'm currently working on a project to replace and update the library management system. That's the thing you will probably use at reading.ac.uk for slash library, where you search for books and journals and articles and all that lot to hopefully meet your essay deadlines. The current system is over 30 years old. The, the university spent an awful lot of time and money doing up the library, making it look posh, but the system is, uh, well, not quite as new and shiny, and you lot deserve the newest and shiniest of systems, in my opinion. What am I doing here? Why am I hijacking your uh, spring assembly? I want to find out from you guys what you think of the current library system so we can help make the new one brilliant. I then want to eat cake and play Mario Kart. You might have seen the games consoles at the back of the room. Is anyone here consider themselves a Mario Kart champion? Yes, sir. <laughs> What's your name? Zoo. Z, uh, well, we will have a game later on. Uh, on the condition I get to Bagsy Princess Peach. She's got the best car and the best dress sense. You also put your hand up, madam. Uh, we'll have a... It, uh, <laughs> and play consoles for so long. Oh, it's a vintage one, isn't it? Can you do three-player on the old Nintendo? We'll have a three-way uh, Mario Kart extravaganza after I've done what, loosely speaking, is, is my job. Uh, we're going to, we're gonna work, we're gonna do a Mentimeter. That's like an interactive fun quiz thing on your phone. And uh, so I just want to gather your thoughts, feelings about the library system. There are no wrong answers. I just want your views and opinions. Uh, this will not go towards your final grade as well, which uh, is quite frankly a relief. So now all you need to do, <laughs> it seems to be a lot of scanning of QR codes this day, isn't it? I wish, honestly, four years ago, I bought shares in whatever company invented that QR code, because I would be absolutely minted. Uh, incidentally, this place is, is very, very impressive. Uh, the IT department doesn't even get free tea or coffee, but it sounds like you guys get zoos turning up to amuse you. So uh, I'm infinitely jealous and uh, considering doing another degree just so I can come to the petting zoo. Uh, so if you could go to mentimeter.com, or if you feel like doing it the laborious way and typing in that very long number, or you can scan the QR code. I'll give you a minute or two to do that. And then... Uh, we shall gather your views on the library. Oh, so I'm gonna, we're going to ask some questions on Mentimeter, but I think there's a, a like a, oh wow, getting likes. I didn't know that happened. That's more likes than I've ever got on anything I put on Facebook. More likes than my picture of my dinner got last night, certainly. I'm expecting me to drop to like one. Uh, there'll also be an opportunity for you to stick your hand up, grab a microphone, and uh, give your view verbally. I appreciate this is uh, somewhat of an intimidating environment, and it might feel unnatural for you to be in here without a pint of snake bite, but I just want a nice, friendly, open chat about the library where there's no rights and wrongs, and uh, we can hopefully all get something out of it and build the library system of the future. Uh, right, so. Firstly, uh, some market research. What degree are you on? slash course, slash module, slash program, and there are any other synonyms. I don't really know how long to give you guys to do, <laughs> do the quiz. Um, well, we've got 20, 30 answers, and there's about 30 of you in here, so that's probably... <laughs> oh, there's a slight issue with the cake. <laughs> so I'm using my cake. I mean, what? <laughs> uh, 
32. Uh, let's see. Good grief. So we've got a wide range of courses. Zoology makes sense. What with the uh, imminent approach of the zoo? Very useful. Brilliant. So a nice spread of all of you. So now let's find out what year you guys are in. Well, it's a bit early for first years to be out of bed, isn't it? It's amazing. That's honestly fantastic. And now, uh, just to gauge the mood of the room, uh, which fictional character do you feel like today? Uh, Gollum from Lord of the Rings, uh, Peter Pan, Eeyore, uh, Behemoth, <laughs> well, Oscar helped me put this bit together, and uh, apparently Behemoth is a, a character from an obsessive cat of a gun from a really obscure political satire, which is now on my library list, so uh, I, I learned something already by doing this. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that was the candle bloke's name. <laughs> the cardboard edition. <laughs> Interesting, more, more people answered this question than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so either you're more into Disney characters than fictional characters than your degrees, or <laughs> you've only just woken up. Um, oh, we can see comments. I didn't know you could do that. That's, uh, that's taking a risk, isn't it? <laughs> OK, that doesn't really do anything. Uh, right, let's see what the... Oh, does it not give the... Um, Oscar, can we not get the results of the... Fictional character, I didn't. Oh, that was it. So, so the cardboard candle bloke won. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm uh, presenting to a room of cardboard candles. <laughs> All my dreams were erupting at once. Okay, so let's uh, cast our eyes to the future in one sentence. What do you expect from a library of the future? Remember, there's no right or wrong answers. just a nice, fun way to get, get to thinking. can just be a sentence. You do not need to write an essay or dissertation. And uh, <laughs> otherwise, I wouldn't meet the marking deadline, let's be honest. Brilliant. Let's have a look at some of these. I'm very, very intrigued. Do you able to play video games on the open PCs? <laughs> An excellent suggestion, but my colleagues in IT security would probably uh, be, be uh, uh, less enthusiastic, uh, despite the fact they blatantly play computer games all day. Easy access to check out books. Oh, e easy access to... Okay, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> we want books, yeah. We're not going to get rid of the books. That'd be a foolhardy. Cake. <laughs> I'm all on board for cake. Uh, free printing, accessibility uh, to a wider range of resources, uh, more copies of books, uh, droids to bring me books. I like that suggestion. Whoever said that one, that is uh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, we'll find the librarians have also, uh, they'll take on the Libratron 5000, which is a robot that goes around shushing you. Uh, be brilliant. When it, all computers to have RTX for <laughs> series graphic cards. <laughs> is that uh, a friend of the person who wants to play uh, video games <laughs> on the library PCs? Uh, that's fantastic. And we, oh, it's two fingers on the Mac, isn't it? I'm a Windows user, unfortunately. Uh, much easier way to find books. Uh, it's hard to find them. I, yeah, to be honest, I did get lost in the journal section looking for a Terry Pratchett book. I just assumed someone had nicked them all, uh, so I can sympathise with that one. Uh, it being easier to get books, uh, I literally don't understand how to find or get books. It's still stresses me out. Uh, less crowded. Do feel free to ask the library staff, though. They're going off on a tangent and way outside the scope of my project. I'm just looking at the system. But if you do ask them generally, they tend to be really helpful. At least they were when I was an undergrad, uh, which was a while ago, admittedly. Um, uh, less crowded, more seats, uh, more tech. Um, yeah, we, could, we all, uh, all like more tech. Uh, better online ac uh, accessibility. Oh, I'm not very good with this Mac mouse. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, f uh, free printing again. <laughs> I think this might come up with a, stu a few uh, student voices uh, soon, Oscar. Um, automatic mat automatability. Uh, more library books, more e-books. Uh, sensors that recognise students' cars whilst in pockets. That is that would be clever. Uh, more comfy chairs. 
uh, library, <laughs> library that already knows what book I need. That really would be the library of the future. Uh, in the same way, I guess like Amazon knows exactly what I'm going to buy before I've bought it. It would be frightening, but also time cons uh, time saving, wouldn't it? Uh, a library that encouraged uh, support your learning process, uh, not make it inconvenient. Uh, easy access to books and printing. Uh, more clear subject dividers and courses. Yeah, the, the endless shelves are rather uh, uh, intimidating sometimes. I find. Uh, Brilliant. There's a, a wide range of views. So now, uh, let's get down to what do we mostly use the library for? Do you take out physical books, or do you go look after journals, or do you look for e-books the most? It's like a race. <laughs> e-books are in the lead. Coming up in second position, it's physical books, so it's turned the corner. <laughs> uh, journals lagging behind. 27, 28. Oh, it's neck and neck for pole position. <laughs> Journals, as uh, well, might as well have not turned up today. That's very interesting. I wonder if it was this. Would there were more postgrads here. Journals would get more of a look in. But as it is, only three of you out of thirty odd. Yeah, so physical books. That is uh, very interesting. So wherever, wherever we said uh, that the library of the future uh, must contain books is a. Uh, uh, spot on with that. That's it's interesting to know. So now getting down to the nitty gritty of the system itself. At the moment, you've got one box uh, to find uh, physical books and one to find articles and journals, etc. Uh, and I'd like to know which do you prefer, one search box or multiple boxes? Has anyone got any, any any way of expanding? Do you, do you find the current way of there being two boxes easier? Anyone going to be brave and stick a hand up? Oscar, you ever ever used this? <laughs> when was the last time we did an essay? <laughs> um, I reckon I I like multiple boxes. I think that there's that you get your books versus your your journal and your specific articles. But anyone disagree? Yeah, does anyone have a specific? Do we, do we even have a roving microphone? Because I, I shouldn't throw this at someone. That'd be. That we should do that. Okay, we don't have a roving microphone. I mean, is anybody brave enough just to yell a view point? Yes. So the enterprise cap, you can't. If you're in a, so you just, you just said the enterprise catalog doesn't work in the Soviet countries. That's fascinating. Was that a firewall issue? Is that all university sites? That's bizarre. But the if you if you're searching summon, it'll work. Yeah. That's so bizarre. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. That must be some sort of licensing quirk. <laughs> My colleague from IT is also looking blank on this one. <laughs> um, wow, no, thank you for that. It's uh, interesting to know. Um, so it just doesn't load at all? Yeah, it doesn't load. So at the moment, uh, you guys seem to prefer having multiple searches, which is uh, good to know. And a more general question, do you find the process of looking up a book on the library system long-winded or quick? Again, there's no right or wrong answer for this. If anyone is brave enough to say why they find it long-winded or how it's quick, then that would be infinitely helpful. I'll give you a few more minutes on that one. Brilliant. Right, does anyone want to... Right, let's... let's put this back into the real world, as nice as screens are. Stick your hand up, please, if you voted long-winded. Marvellous. Is anyone going to be brave enough to say why? What, what did you find long-winded about it? Anyone? Uh, Madam in the front row? <laughs> um, I think that it's a So if you know the exact title and author and whatnot, easy. But if you're searching around a subject, OK, brilliant. Excellent. Who, who else was there? Anyone else going to pipe up? See, that was, that was very easy. That was good to shout out views. Uh, that is how it's done. Perfect. Um, was there anyone else? 
Now, you put your hand up. <laughs> well, I don't know how you'd know, because you're in a country where you couldn't access it. <laughs> um, so yes, madam, in the back. <laughs> okay, so you were after a book so specific that the librarian couldn't find it and you couldn't find it either. Must be a very niche subject. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. And I guess people just took them all um, home and there was no, no, none left. Uh, but, you know, he could have said that like the first five minutes, but oh, yeah. I felt like it was really long-winded to <laughs> so tell did, me. Did you have the author and title or not? Were yeah. you searching I, it? I was a bit confused about the author or I, I had the, like, no, the edition. Yeah. Uh, and I was just trying to find out. Oh, it was a journal then. It was, was a book. It? it was a book. Oh, it was a book, it was, okay. Yeah, it was a textbook and uh, I asked for help and I felt like they had less idea than I had about how to find a book. Oh my gosh. It was <laughs> strange, so I don't feel very confident about asking for help with that anymore. <laughs> but maybe yeah. it was the person, I don't know. Well, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> everyone has an off day, but uh, no, thanks for sharing that. That, is a, that definitely sounds like a, a long-winded afternoon in the library. Is there anyone else who, has, uh, who set their hand up for uh, a gentleman in the uh, black hoodie? Uh, I like agree that the main thing is if you're trying to find something like around the subject, I'm not often like looking for a specific book. It's about like you're pulling like keywords into um, Summon. And I had a lecturer the other day say, don't use the library website, find what you want to find on Google Scholar and then read it on the library website because the way it filters and sorts the most relevant results is really like inefficient. Even if I've like the other day I looked up something specific and it was like the sixth, fifth or sixth result, even though I put it in kind of word for word. So I think like the how it um, like sorts kind of results is a bit, bit of a problem. Oh, interesting. So basically, you use Google Scholar to generate the search terms to make the library system do what it should be doing, almost. In that. Yeah, yeah. I go into Google Scholar and then find, oh, that looks interesting. I'll access that through the library um, because it filters stuff better. Mm, sounds like a lack of metadata. Maybe the new system should have a ton more metadata. So if you're just searching around topics, that might make things easier to find. Um, did anyone did anyone find it? Quick and easy, and uh, that's, it's always harder to expand on, yeah, it went well, but uh, does anyone have any points to make about it being quick? Nope, that, that, is, that is fair enough. Uh, I found my book and it was great. <laughs> uh, right, let's go on to the next question. No, thank you for all those uh, points, that's really interesting to know. Um, is it easy to keep track of when you need to return a book to the library? Well, if you've never borrowed a book, hopefully we've got oh, five of you. <laughs> hopefully we can't infer that that means you've just stolen them or whatever. Six. Excellent. Yeah, I, 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 do have an, I do have an overdue book at the moment, so I've, 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 got, I've got my own views on this. Um, so, hands up then if you uh, said no. Marvellous. Have you, have you got anything to say about what, what, what's difficult about finding the finding the system? I mean, I've, I've, I've had my own problems with this, admittedly, so I'll, I'll, I'll share that in a moment. But <laughs> um, I think it's just that, I mean, maybe there is a way, but I have no idea if you can actually see what books you've checked out. You just kind of have to like look at what physical copies you have and just kind of know when. I mean, I don't know if you can access it online. I just kind of hope for the best or wait until I get an angry email from the library that's like, you need to return this when I go back. So, yeah. I've heard, I, to be honest, I had a similar experience. I took a, bu a book out the other day just to see how this all worked and then uh, I, I went onto the library website and it took me absolutely ages to find the link to log into my account. Once I found the account, it was clear that I had a fine to pay. Um, so if the li new library don't get their system on time, then I guess I won't have my fines waived. Um, but there we go. Uh, but yeah, I, I can sympathise with that one. So let's uh, rattle through to the uh, one of the last questions. Uh, is there something that you wish you could do with the library system? 
very open question. I'm really intrigued by this one because uh, the answers to what the library of the future should do were so wide and uh, imaginative. I'm uh, excited by this one. I I'm already predicting someone is going to say, can write my essays for me like a uh, chat GPT can. <laughs> Brilliant. So, <laughs> find books, yes. <laughs> Put that down as the number one system requirement. Uh, sort books more accurately. Uh, more support with audio material. Uh, that is a good point, actually, in terms of accessibility. Group journals and books are requested by departments uh, via reading lists. Uh, Part-time jobs for students. Interesting. Uh, filter by subject area when searching terms. Um, Find books on specific topics using keywords. Uh, make it easier to find uh, translate uh, editions of books. Allow undergraduates to have access to printers on their laptops. Uh, <laughs> printers seems to be a very hot topic in here. Um, have a <laughs> outside my scope. Have a part uh, of the uh, university student app that keeps track of books. Uh, brilliant. That's a, actually a very good idea. That kind of ties into our last question about uh, how many books do we have overdue. And I've learned how to use a Mac mouse to scroll. Um, so if that is all I have learned today, I haven't have learned loads, but th this is already a good day. Um, some PCs take longer to open. Uh, we all want things to be faster, I guess. Uh, make a reference generator. Uh, does it not link to EndNote or not? No? OK. Uh, way to access reading lists automatically. Uh, Easier, earlier reminders of returning books, easier to find out if a journal is available online, faster connectivity, uh, possible use of Starlink. What is Starlink? I'm going to just going to display my ignorance. Can someone sum up what Starlink is in, in a sentence? What? It's what, say? Elon, Elon Musk. Oh, right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, put Elon Musk in charge of the library. Let's not do that. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> I'm trying to think what books he'd get in. Um, oh, now I've broken it. I knew this was going too smoothly. There we go. Um, right. Have an oil pen <laughs> painting of Oscar Minto as the logo. <laughs> I, I second that. He is a voice of a generation. <laughs> uh, 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 more reminders. In-person opportunities. Uh, you can book to help students to help you find books. Uh, free printing, again. Uh, recruit student as librarians. Uh, more filters in terms of research. And <laughs> printing, printing, printing. Uh, more toilets. Uh, totally out of scope of the library system. Right, if, I, if I typed in, the, the, this is the thing that helps you find books, but um, that is probably uh, something for you to raise with other people. Just uh, writing uh, to say the reference, uh, just writing to say the reference generator is a good idea. So that's, uh, oh, that's seconding that other comment about a reference generator. Oh, we've gone back, haven't we? Oh, brilliant. And one final comment on this. Um, uh, availability to book on campus as well. Uh, excellent. So, um, final question now. Uh, would you be willing to help me further? We're just looking for a. Uh, oops, I've gone too far. It, we're basically looking for a small uh, pool of students that we can uh, uh, experiment on. I mean, uh, run focus groups on, show you the new library system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hmm? I hope. No, I don't yep. think it does. I think we just hear that. And that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, if you have any thoughts about the library system that comes to you afterwards, uh, you can, uh, despite the fact there's only one other Roger in the entire university, my, my department has given me this incomprehensible email address, r.d.k.buttrick at reading.ac.uk. If you can be bothered to type that into your computer and email me with your thoughts, uh, if you have any bright ideas uh, after this session, then I'd be very, very grateful. Uh, but brilliant, thanks. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, giving up your time. Uh, this has been uh, uh, excellent fun, and thanks for sharing all your views on the library system, I shall hand you back to Oscar. Thank you very much. A pause for Rodri, everyone. That was amazing. <laughs> um, so, we now, um, just before um, we have the ones of Jeff coming on stage with us, we do have coffee and we do have cake. There was a slight issue with the cake, um, but there is cake. It's just it's more packaged cake. So, apologies um, on that one. Uh, but yes, 
Jeff, you're, you're talking about how to apply course experience. Go forth. Thanks, Oscar. Good to see uh, some familiar faces. Uh, just quick show of hands. Who was here in the November running? Just so I could see who was here last time. It's great. Good percentage of you. So uh, I'm certainly reliably informed there's brownies as a minimum over there as well. So, um, yeah, so last time uh, we were here. Uh, this is what we spoke about. We, so um, we went through all the sort of course rep fundamentals, built on a lot of content that um, Oscar shared. Um, I sort of proposed a model for you in terms of you know how to perhaps have more impact, how you could think about the sort of planning, how you could think about how you sort of debate and figure out that kind of issues, and then you know with that how you could then go ahead and potentially use those skills to persuade and have a stronger contribution um, in those uh, student rep uh, meetings, whether they're the SSPGs um, or the Board of Study meetings. And what I said like, um, at the end was next time, what we're going to talk about is how we could sort of reflect a little bit in terms of um, what worked for you. Uh, and certainly I was here to give a bit of input as to how you could best represent those experiences, whether it's for next year, for when you're applying for roles, or potentially how you could use those um, in interview. So we're going to get to that now. Um, I have also got a very quick mentee, but what I'm going to do, because I can't bother to log on here, is I'm going to run it off my phone. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do, there's only going to be a couple of questions. So the first one's going to be a poll. So based on, and it's probably going to be a smaller group, those of you that were here last time, if you were able to employ some of those sort of um, um, approaches that we discussed, uh, whether you had some, um, some success, definitely positive success, not on Indeed, if anyone's got anything to share, uh, I'll give you two voting options so you can actually vote to put your uh, hand up as well briefly. Um, then there's going to be a second quick one, which is a reflection about how you go about um, the experience you've got when you're sitting in those meetings and in those forums, um, and what kind of skills you think you are developing through that. So um, armed with that, this is the code. So let's go on to uh, the first uh, question, and I will we'll see if I can get it up in the meantime. It should be hopefully live. Is this alt tab? Uh, no, I'll probably have to log on to it. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. If I can just log out and log on. I'll stop presenting on that one. And present on this one. Fantastic. I just pressed the mute button. There we go. Uh, great. All right. So um, definitely some positives for a third review. That's great. Some with some. So perfect. Um, and some necessarily haven't got there so far. And and I think if we can do the mental masters, perhaps a couple of people have a couple of quick contributions in terms of feedback. And so probably at this point, sort of see who had something to share. My hearing's pretty good, so go on, go for it. Um, the strike was uncancelled. Yes. But then we still didn't have a meeting, and I haven't received any feedback from the school to hear about what went on in the meeting, if they took any of our suggestions into consideration. So I just don't know what's happening there. Okay. Uh, no, I'm the course rep for BSL. Okay. So um, unfortunate, obviously, it's very unfortunate there's uh, elements of disruption going around at the moment. I, I would suggest, um, in terms of a potential follow up, you know, I think if the feedback wasn't actively discussed, then it's probably certainly the opportunity to sort of reignite and recirculate that. And actually, it might be that there's a means of, you know, whether it's the, um, you get all the acronyms, SDTL, you know, the, the sort of those positions of responsibility across uh, the particular faculty that you're, that you're in, to actually see whether there's something or whether they're going to actively take it forward and re-roll it into the next meeting. To hopefully, was that a spring one or was that the autumn one? 
That was the spring one. Um, uh, and I guess the other thing is if there's some time critical components, and again, it might be a case of saying, well, we really would value sort of feedback on this and ensure it's so, and there'll be an off cycle dialogue, certainly in the instance where that was, um, that was challenged. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And ever so briefly then on to the next one. So this is just for a free word form. What kind of things do you think, um, whether or not you were um, using any of the materials that we shared last time, what are you developing through your experience as a course rep? So I, had a couple, I don't want to sort of feed the witness here, but I had a couple on the previous slide just as potential prompts. Here we go, we're starting to get things coming up, perfect. Maybe I should have done with a darker background. So great, so we've certainly got a, a strength of communication skil skills being developed. We've got time management, organization, collaboration, contributing through public speaking, fantastic. Uh, good to see the confidence building, assertiveness, great. And uh, critiquing, this is fantastic. It's uh, wonderful to see some great pieces coming out. That's fantastic. And so what I'll certainly do, I might change it to a darker background. Um, uh, I'm very happy for um, Oscar to share these slides afterwards so you can, again, you can sort of see and if there's any, any others that relate to you. So uh, thank you for, for that. Now, if we can just go back to the slides, hopefully. Is that in presentation mode? Wonderful, thank you. That's all right. Okay, so uh, we went through those. So we, we had a number of those skills. This is one of the sort of standard skill slides that we often talk about when we sort of recognize in skills that we're developing. It's, it's obviously outside of the pure academic components that obviously you're gaining so much input from, uh, depending on what year stage uh, that you're in. Um, and you know, these are skills that can stay with you. And you may have a natural preference. You may have a bias to one set over the other. But what I'd say is all the pieces that you listed out a moment ago are massively valuable. And you can apply those ultimately in lots of different circumstances. Um, there was a survey that was undertaken last year. It's something from another university in conjunction with YouGov. Um, and it was a future skills um, survey asking about 2,000 business leaders about some of the things they thought were going to be important over, uh, over the upcoming cycles. And, you know, problem solving was a big part. Critical thinking, which I saw on there. Communication skills was there. Um, uh, critique and analysis um, was there. Coming out of COVID, I think resilience was a new entry into this list, uh, and otherwise a couple of the others uh, moved up and down a little bit. So again, we've seen a big um, compare there between what you said and what is potentially some of those future skills that can be valuable uh, as you potentially think about future, um, future positions as you move on uh, through your university career and afterwards. And, and how might you use those? So um, you know, I'm here to represent careers, so you know, these are the kind of instances where certainly as you think about the sort of um, employability and you know the kind of opportunity you may be seeking there's lots of instances so obviously networking you know even going to these um, op, um these forums is a great opportunity uh, to meet hear from others other people on your course who have been through the different parts of the uh, the the um a degree journey before you uh, as well as from the staff perspective um, we'll talk about the cv in a bit more depth and also um, in interview so you know the networking side um Obviously, we have lots of events that are open to you across the university. Otherwise, there's also ones uh, externally and other shows and exhibitions that you may be attending. Maybe some of you are back here in October to see the, um, the careers fair. And again, how you could, again, um, with that confidence that's being built and your communication skills, how you engage uh, in those areas. You know, some of the um, strength that uh, you could have those skills being employed in is, is when you develop an elevator pitch, how you could quickly represent yourself for big impact in a very short period of time. And of course, you, know, you could reference them on, on LinkedIn as well. So you know, a quick word on terms of the, the, elevator, the elevator pitch. And it, it's, you know, it's very, um, uh, very similar, in, in fact, between perhaps what you might say on that LinkedIn profile, where you've got your summary, your profile section, or at the top of your uh, CV, what are the key sort of skills that you have? Uh, what's the um, situation that you're in right now? And maybe what you're, what you're looking for? Um, I think the idea of being sort of in person obviously is very enthusiastic, you know, approaching, you know, in the most confident way that you feel comfortable with uh, and, um, you know, being conscious on the sort of signals that you're giving off, ultimately sort of smiling with your eyes as well as your, uh, as well as the, as well as your smile uh, and then thinking about, you know, what it is that you want that person to be, 
uh, most informed by and how that resonates with what they're particularly uh, potentially interested in, in, in candidates. Now, I've got a little bit of worked example as to how this may present itself. And since we've got Oscar in the room, I sort of pitched it uh, as a law example. So, you know, this isn't, this isn't me, but I sort of call myself Jeff here. So, you know, you could be saying, you know, who, um, who you are, some of the strengths that you've got. So here we've got an example of being a, a finalist uh, with experience campaigning for a charity and a sustainable interest, which is obviously very strong um, here at the Reading University as well. This is where they're talking about some of their unique skills. So you can talk about, you know, I've got experience in, in um, supporting campaigns, you know, leading webinars and talks, and I'm looking at some research in terms of the climate change uh, in this sector and what they're explicitly looking for. You can very easily set out your stall very directly and you can absolutely tailor that to the different kind of opportunities. You might say something to one stall and if another organization in another sector, you can obviously tailor that uh, to the next kind of stall. Now, in terms of the setup of the room, I'm not sure it was, uh, it was going to work, but I was going to sort of wonder whether there was an opportunity to practice with a neighbor, but I'm not sure I'm going to put you uh, through that in the, interest, uh, in the interest of time, but I was going to say there was a prompt, but it's something that's relatively simple with a little bit of structure as to how you could you know, practice by yourself. You could record yourself very easily in terms of um, having that on your, uh, on your selfie videos to think about what that pitch could be, and it might be as simple as 30. But again, it's what, who you are, what you bring, and what you're looking for. So that's how you could think about uh, the skills. And of course, you know, within the examples of your um, experiences as a uh, course rep, there could be additional pieces that you sort of draw out from, um, from that. Um, now, in terms of the sort of one of the practical stages we often see, there's lots of ways that we sort of talk about helping students in terms of their CVs. You've got obviously how you position your academic experience, uh, how you position uh, other work experience or placement roles that maybe you've had, uh, and all the extra kind of extracurricular pieces that you have. But, you know, the course rep side, you can either have it as a sub bullet within your um, degree category, about how you're, it's part of your university journey, so you could have it um, as part of that. But you could equally have it in terms of other experiences in sort of the extracurricular uh, activity section that you may have um, as well. I mean, you know, again, just to reiterate probably the continued thanks for the roles that you're doing supporting your fellow students uh, and supporting the schools that you're, you're all part of. You know, it definitely shows your engagement, your willingness to get involved, and it can certainly therefore be a differentiator and you'll be able to demonstrate some of those transferable skills that can be important in securing a future position. So um, there's a couple of different ways we could um, think about this. So I, I sort of try to work up a couple, of, um, a couple of ways as to really sort of put on paper some of the skills that hopefully you would recognize that you are demonstrating yourself. So as a course rep, we've sort of broken it down in terms of this is a probably a, an extended um, showcase version. So again, just taking a moment to, to digest. We're talking the first one about you know, facilitating communication, which you obviously put down in those uh, notes a moment ago. Gathering feedback from others, an important part, both gathering the feedback and representing the views of others. You know, there's a piece of leadership and interpersonal skills that comes from that. Uh, the second one talks about organization. You know, you could talk about planning. You could talk about whether you're planning for a meeting. You could talk about how you are uh, planning the activities for how you gather some of those feedback. Uh, and the final one is, is in terms of um, working through uh, issues, problem solving, making recommendations, uh, thinking strategically. So, you know, that was a bit long though. So I made a couple of punchy versions. And these could almost be something that, for example, you could sort of lift and, and represent if you were having the bandwidth to, and the space on your CVs to be able to put them down. So this is just an example that takes those um, long form versions that hopefully you recognize and how you could represent that uh, on a potential CV. As I can see a couple of people taking photos, but I'm more than happy for these to be sent out uh, to all of you and they did those that couldn't quite make it, make it today. Does that make sense? Is that something that people would find valuable in terms of perhaps capturing that as part of? I see a few nods around the room already. Thank you. Um, so when else might you do that? So obviously in, in interviews. Um, so your CV statements, these are ultimately examples um, of, and you've got several examples, no doubt, depending on the different meetings that you may uh, be partaking in, whether that's just the SSPG or taking it forward into the, the full board of study uh, meetings. But the examples that you have, you could probably address different types of questions that may come up. I'm not going to go to um, a lot of these, but there's a few different types of questions that could easily come up and how we could apply to them. So when you think about strengths and recognizing the strengths that you're developing, or when there's a, the sort of competency, skill-based questions, that's also a good place. And I'll just talk quickly about STARG. Some of you may have come across this already, um, but some may not yet. So 
you know, we've got a lot more resources on our careers website. There's a link at the bottom there, so you'll be able to go on later on to understand you know, a whole variety and some of the additional ways these questions may, may be asked. But there's a few different, um, few different types. So the motivation ones, I'm not going to address that here today, but those are the ones, you know, why do you want to work here? What drives you for, you know, taking that law example, a career in the law? So that's, it's very important to have uh, those at the back of your mind already that really talk to your motivations. But when we talk about the evidence, the competency-based, and then the strengths-based ones, these are where you know, the STAR example, which I'll talk about in a moment, is a good framework as to how you could you know, think about structuring an answer and weaving in those skills with the specific activities uh, that you led. And then there's a whole range of other ones that can be there. They can be sort of stress-based questions. There's often the ones I often call the Google, the Google style questions, which is, you know, how would you move Everest six foot to the right? It's not about the answer. It's about how you would structure and frame and then test a proposal uh, and how you'd work through that. So um, who's, first of all, come across the star way to answer questions so far? So we've got a percentage. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> Hands up at the back. So let, let's talk briefly about what star is. And so star is a... Um, a pretty simple acronym that will allow you to sort of mentally keep track as to where you are, rather than sort of you know losing focus, maybe waffling on in a different direction and not quite addressing what the what the um, question was. It's a great structure. So what we do is uh, we first of all say well where we were, you know it's the actual um, context as to where this example um, came from, uh, a brief reference to what the specific task was, what you've been asked uh, to do with this example. The majority of our time will be spent on focusing on the actions that you took. That's where you really demonstrate the sort of skills that you're employing and how you went about doing it. And then finally, there's the result. And it can be positive, but at times, there's very real value in showing a negative outcome as well. And I haven't got it on the slide, but that's where there's a second R you can have for bonus points, and that's reflection. So if I had more time, I would actually have done this. You know, in hindsight now, probably I should have actually spent more time gathering extra feedback, testing the scenario before I put it forward. So that self-reflection part can be a very posi um, positive way of reinforcing, and that's you know, a good sort of um, trait uh, to sort of demonstrate through interview as well. So let's work through um, an, example, uh, an example here. So uh, tell us about a time you've worked in collaboration with others to achieve a, a goal. So, you know, I've worked, again, this one up just as an example of how it could uh, be applied. And again, the, question, the questions could obviously cover a range of different answers um, in terms of the skills that they're looking for. This one's talking about collaboration. So here we go. We, uh, someone was volunteering to represent the views of others, asking to provide feedback. That's the summary of the, the task there. And then, so what were the actions this person took? So I put them in bold for you. So say they created a survey. So again, I'm taking the action there. They followed up, um, you know, summarizing and presenting and ultimately, if it's anything more challenging, in terms of feedback, sharing it in advance. So several little steps that were easily outlined in terms of the pieces that were just you know, preparing for, for a meeting. And at the end of the day, you know, a positive result that the voice was understood. Um, I was in a meeting where at least this, this discussion was um, raised in one of the schools I, um, I support. I can get to a positive result. Again, you could also, also add that reflection in terms of what you could have done differently for next time around. But it doesn't have to just be you know, your experience as a course rep. You know, this technique can be applied to all manner of different contexts. So again, with all the other experiences that you're, uh, you're gaining, you know, I always say retail and hospitality roles, you know, working in a bar, working in a store, you know, those can also give great examples. So again, it's just a framework that's there to help you. Here, we've got an example on communication skills, you know, talking about a, um, uh, dealing with a customer problem. And again, in the action, they listened, they summarized, they adapted their language in terms of trying to uh, solve this customer issue. Um, and then, you know, ultimately the customer understood, saw an alternative solution in this example, and they got positive feedback. So that's the sort of a, a, reinforcing, a reinforcing example. Now again, I think because of where we are today, I was trying to think about a way that I could have this going live for you, but maybe this is a little optional takeaway activity for you as well when you, when you see the size. So, you know, you don't have long to practice. You can have several stories behind the scenes, but obviously you're on the spot when you're in an interview situation. So that's why the STAR acronym is quite easy to remember a quite quick flow and think about your, your, leadership, um, your leadership experience. So, um, again, I'm sure through the different meetings you've had, you've had a different number of different roles and a number of different questions where you were asked, asked to support. So, uh, yeah, that's an example. And I think probably showing my workings. 
I actually put one in there for you as well. So this one's probably a little bit extended, but I did this one quite um, earlier today before <laughs> before I came in thinking it might be more challenging to run through. So um, yeah, again, so this was about uh, representing. Um, Oh, this is actually more general. This wasn't necessarily asking the questions, but again, if you could talk about uh, sharing your experience, again, it can be a frame to at least position the variety of activities that you were that you were doing. So positions of responsibility, again, the communication piece can be woven into there as well. Uh, you can talk about the relationships. You can talk about organisation skills that you had to go through, um, identifying ways of resolving conflict, uh, and ultimately, again, you know, leading to a successful outcome. So uh, hopefully that is a frame for how, whether it's in your sort of CV or through interviews, and you know, coming back to this way we sort of said last time, what have we um, done? We've sort of looked at um, the different ways that we can represent our experience, whether it's through networking opportunities, you know, how we could integrate those in terms of some um, brief CV um, bullets, how you could uh, employ them um, within interviews and the reference to the star. So I think in terms of getting this back on track, I think we're basically there. The only thing I would sort of say in terms of a, a closing comment, knowing that these slides will, will come out, you know, as a team, we're here to support you in whatever field you may want. So if it's about working through an example of this, feel free to come over and uh, book an appointment with us. We're just next door in the Carrington building. Um, I would also say if there's anything in terms of the careers provision across your different schools, actively reach out, uh, reach out to the careers lead um, for your school. We are covering several schools each, but there's always a careers lead for, for each school that is uh, represented by you um, today. So absolutely reach out to us, uh, see where we can support you further, and indeed obviously adjust our approach for future years if that's required. So I think with that, I'm happy to stick around and have a coffee, answer any questions that you've um, got directly, but thanks Oscar for inviting me back. Thank you very much. Thank you, round of applause for Jeff Thank you very much, Jeff. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, coffee and cake, reduced cake, but to be honest, there's a reduced amount of people in the room. So um, feel free, it's over there. There are games behind you. There's table tennis um, and uh, Mario Kart or Mario something um, and, and an, an Xbox there as well. So um, stick around. If you have any questions, I'm going to be there. Jeff's going to be there. Roger's here. Um, so there you go. Oh, the, the other thing I forgot to mention, but I haven't mentioned it. Before.